Ancient Aliens. The following was inspired by History Channel's Ancient Aliens series, providing us with an explanation as to who they were according to the ancient spiritual knowledge given to us in the Holy Bible. Were they ancient aliens or were they divine humans? Who were they? They were humans, possessing the same divinity as the first Adam, the first of his kind, made a spiritual being, made in the image of God, with spiritual abilities and godly intelligence. They reached the highest degree, becoming the finest example of humankind while on this earth. They experienced a spiritual creation during their time here on earth, through which they took on the same divine attributes of the first Adam, giving them spiritual abilities and godly intelligence in the afterlife. They became the last Adam with regard to the spiritual energy that existed in their human flesh bodies at the time of their death. A quickening spirit. Adam, the creation of the seventh day, is not to be confused with the creations of the sixth day. Other human-like kinds, varying in beastly appearance, symbolizing the stages in man's spiritual devolution. The first Adam became a human being through the adding of physical flesh. The last Adam becomes a spiritual being through the removal of spiritual flesh through a spiritual circumcision. They are those who overcame that which formed this flesh that cannot be seen, restoring a spiritual energy that cannot be measured, becoming pure spirit with regard to their spiritual essence while still living in their physical flesh body. Why did they come? They desired to return to the place of their physical existence, where they had received and applied the spiritual knowledge left by their ancient ancestors, encoded in our sacred text, ancient writings, encrypted in our ancient ruins, understood by those whose motivations were pure. They followed the ancient instruction completing the spiritual works, receiving the spiritual seed, receiving the highest degree of spiritual life in the spiritual realm, an existence without limitation. They go where they want, when they want, at will. They are time travelers, having the ability to go forward and backward in time, having power over the physical laws of the third dimension, demonstrated by the second Adam, who walked on water, and raise the dead. What did they leave behind? They left behind spiritual knowledge, the Holy Bible being the source of this knowledge. Its mysteries opened up through an understanding of its symbolic code, which has preserved this knowledge for what the Bible calls the end of days. Our ancient ruins, through the measures found within their very construction, stand as monuments to this spiritual truth. The number 72 is found in the construction of the Forbidden City, the number 144 in the construction of the Great Pyramid, referring to spiritual measures of the mind and heart. As the Holy Bible has been misinterpreted, so too has the knowledge left behind in the form of symbols engraved in our ancient ruins. It was never to be about sacrificing human hearts and innocent children demonstrating a beastly obedience to a carnal interpretation. The spiritual knowledge of God's word instructs us to sacrifice the spiritual impurities of our own heart, which are responsible for destroying the pure essence that existed in us as children, impurities that limit us in this life and in the afterlife. Where did they go? They went wherever they wanted to go, having no limitations, able to move through three states, spirit, glorified, physical, at will, needing no physical mode of transportation. There are two distinct types of beings in the Holy Bible. In the story of Abraham, we have three men, appearing and disappearing, as if into thin air. We find this quality or ability in the story of Enoch, who was and then was not. They became spiritual beings in the afterlife by removing all spiritual flesh in this life, their mode of transportation being their minds. Then we have Ezekiel, who describes what appears to be a flying object, and although for some 
There is compelling evidence of beings arriving in flying objects. There is no concrete evidence of such. We have a choice. Go the way of science in the mind or go the way of spirituality in the heart. Being made in the image of God, we have an innate desire to understand and experience the things of the spirit, the things we cannot see. One can use science to measure sound and vibration, some using the science of sound to experience states of consciousness and activity of the mind. Mantras and prayers fall under this level of sound and vibration. Then there is a sound that cannot be heard and a vibration that cannot be felt, taking place at a subconscious level, an activity of the heart. Two distinct paths, one through the mind, the other through the heart. Only one leads back to our spiritual origin of spiritual abilities and godly intelligence. Only one path removes the invisible flesh that limits us in this life and will limit us in the afterlife. Will they return? For what purpose? To teach us some great spiritual truth? They already have demonstrating their spiritual abilities and godly intelligence through their very constructions, astounding the learned minds of our time. Maybe we should consider that it is not about the ancients returning to us, but about us returning to the ancients, to the ancient instruction they left behind for us to follow, encoded in our ancient sacred text and ancient ruins, through which we ourselves can become the gods we seek to understand. The divine beings, the Holy Bible says, existed in former ages. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods? If ye call them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, why say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. The instruction through which one becomes a God.